Hi, welcome to lecture one of social influence and we're going to be focusing on what is conformity, the types of conformity and trying to explain the two types of conformity that we can have. And we're going to be focusing on our key study which is by Solomon Ash. So first of all you'll need to know what is conformity. So I've put a definition up there for you. You don't need to remember it word for word as long as you talk about a majority group having an influence on other people in terms of making them change that the way they behave or the way they think. So practice writing a definition just again summarizing um, the, this, this particular definition. Again it doesn't have to be word for word. Now, um, straightforward, getting straight into it, what you need to know are the two types of conformity. If you have an older textbook of psychology, you're going to notice there are um, other types as well. However, just for this specification, which is AQAA, you only need to know the two of them. Now, when you look at compliance, you need to um, be sure that you're including the key words, which is public and private. And the same thing for internalization. So compliance is where we change our behavior when we're in front of other people. But when we're at home, um, we don't tend to do it. And then internalization, again, the public and private. So you change your behavior both publicly and when you're at home as well. And I've got some examples there for you um, to take a look at. Try and use examples as well when you're explaining the two types of um, conformity. Our key study here by Ash. Again, I've summarized it as much as possible um, in terms of the APFCC, okay? And um, the last two, so criticisms and strengths, are focused on population validity and um, the strengths in terms of being a laboratory and having high control and reducing extraneous variables. Now, um, again, if you've listened to my other lectures, you'll notice that I'm, I filter down as much in terms of remembering research as possible and Ash is the only one I'm going to remember for conformity and I'm going to use him time and time again. I'm also going to use his variations later, um, later on down the line but you'll see how I'm going to do that. So to, good to, to pause this um, video, take a look at the study, familiarise yourself with it. They're not expecting you to know the study word for word but they are expecting you to know the generics of it. For example, male undergraduates, where it took place, America, and just the key findings, yeah, and what they were asked to do, obviously. Looking at um, explanations of conformity, again, just learn these two explanations. Some older textbooks are going to give you three. However, for the AQAA specification, you only need to know these two. So, you need to know that the first one, normative, leads to compliance because we as human beings we all have the basic need to want to feel accepted and liked by anybody so when we um, come across a new environment for example and um, we don't seem to know anybody we don't want to be rejected so we tend to change our behavior so we can be accepted by the by the group of people and that's why it leads to compliance because even though we may not gen generically believe in what they're doing or they're not they might not be doing it correctly we tend to um, change our behavior simply um, because everybody else is doing it in public, but private, we don't believe it. And then informational, again, we as human beings, we always want to be right about everything. So we see sometimes others as being experts in a particular field. And I like to use an example of going into a religious um, building and you've never been there before and everyone's taken off their shoes. So what you start doing, you start looking around at what other people are doing because you believe these people to be correct and right because they know this particular religion. So therefore you change your behavior publicly and because privately you also believe them to be right. And this one leads to internalization. The best way to remember this is informational I, internalization I. Yeah. So and the other one is just normative versus compliance. But always remember informational is the same I as internalization. Okay, so that is the end of lecture one. That is all you need to know in terms of um, what is conformity, types of conformity, the key research. Ash, you need to know Ash like the back of your hands. You need to know him as much as possible. So what he did, so what he wanted to do, what he's um, done, what he found, his conclusions, criticisms and strengths. And you're going to see how I've um, managed to write this essay later on in the lectures need to know the two explanations again give an example make sure you know 
how it leads to compliance and how informational leads to internalization. And I'll see you again in lecture 1A.